Good afternoon. My name is Amanda Jarvis, and I'm with the Virginia SBDC Network. For those of you that are not familiar with our organization, the Virginia Small Business Development Center is a partnership program between the U.S. Small Business Administration, George Mason University, and local host institutions throughout Virginia. With 27 locations across the Commonwealth, we provide training and technical assistance to small businesses in their local communities. Our one-on-one -on -one consulting services are available at no charge. Today's webinar, Free Research Assistance, Business Development, and Career Enhancement at Your Public Library, is presented by the Virginia SBDC Network in collaboration with the Library of Virginia. We are recording today's presentation, and it will be posted on our website, virginiasbdc.org. Due to the large number of participants, everyone's microphone is muted, but if you have questions during the presentation, you can type those into the Q&A box. We have also enabled the live transcript function, which you can show or hide via your meeting controls. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our presenters for today's session. Nan Carmack is the Director of the Library Development and Networking Division at the Library of Virginia in Richmond, and also a small business owner. Barry Trott um, is a, an adult services consultant with the Library of Virginia. Um, please well, join me in welcoming our presenters for today, Nan Carmack and Barry Trott. Thank you so much. It's such a joy to be with you. Um, Barry, if you want to go ahead and share your screen. So all of those things that were just said about us, you might think libraries, small business, what the heck? Why are we all here together like this today about libraries? Well, we have a uh, um, Okay, you can go ahead and change the slides uh, to the next slide. There we go. The next one, yeah. There it is. So who are we? Uh, we're a division of the Library of Virginia, and our whole role is to support public libraries across the Commonwealth. So I hope you already have your public library card, but if you don't, I'm going to... Um, bet that by the end of our time together today that you're going to run right out and get it. So there is a division like ours in every public in every state library in the in the nation um, to administer the Library Services and Technology Act to from the federal government to the public. So Barry, next slide, please. So one of the projects that we have with the Library Science and Technology Act is called Find It Virginia. And Find It Virginia is a carefully curated selection of databases, online learning products, um, e-resources, and magazines for Virginians of all ages. And it's a great place to begin your research and your learning journey. And all of the resources are, well, they're not free. You've already paid for them with your tax dollars. But they're available with your public library card. And many of the resources are also available in the K-12 environment. And who's our target audience? Everyone. Uh, but today we are focused on you, small businesses. And as a small business owner myself, um, you know, we are experts at the thing that is at the core of our business. But we are often not experts at marketing, accounting, HR, all of those things that go along with presenting our expertise to the public. So public libraries are really in there, in this market, um, trying to support you as you, you know, make your way in the small business world. It won't surprise you, I don't think, to know that all libraries offer you free Wi-Fi and computer access. 99% of the libraries have copiers and fax machines um, available to you. Sometimes those are for a fee. Um, but it's still cheaper than Kinko's or Staples. <laughs> so um, your library is there to support those particular business needs. They do also have space for meetings and for remote work. So if you need to have a quiet workspace and maybe don't have broadband at home, libraries could be um, a place for you. There's also print and digital resources. And we're gonna go over a lot of those for you today. And not just for you, as the business owner, but potentially for the employees that you might have that need some development opportunities as well. And many libraries do have hotspot and laptop checkouts available to you. You just use your library card to check out the hotspot and laptop. 
again, gaining that digital access for free. Next slide, Barry. So some of the things that we can do for you um, is that research piece. That's what librarians are trained to do. That's part of our master's degree is becoming excellent research assistants, uh, researchers and providing that assistance to the public. So I'm sure that the Small Business Development Center at some point said to you, well, who's your market? What market segment? What are your competitors? And you might have gone, um, I don't know. And then thought, well, how do I find that out? Well, librarians are people who can help you with that. We can refer you to other resources in your community, which of course is different across every segment of the state. We can help you research your target markets. We can help you research your competition. This is exactly what librarians do and we're there to serve. We, I love it when somebody comes in with a good meaty, what we call a reference question or a request for research. So we're also developing lots of different partnerships across the um, Commonwealth and the entrepreneurial um, ecosystem, if you will. And one of those is um, with the Southeast Rural Community Assistance Project, also known as CIRCAP. One of the products that Barry's going to introduce you to is called the Entrepreneurial Learning Initiative. And if you take that class and complete that class, you're going to become eligible for a $5,000 business loan through the Entrepreneurial Learning Initiative and the CIRCAP project. The loans are focused on rural communities, but they also consider applicants from urban environments that are responding to a community need. So um, Barry and I are happy to talk with you guys uh, individually at another time about uh, CIRCAP and if that's available to you. But that's just one example of some of the partnerships we're developing to benefit libraries, um, to benefit the partnership between libraries and the small business community across the Commonwealth. Um, but that CIRCAP, I think Barry can tell you in a moment what the, that goes on through the summer, right, Barry? Uh, yes, I believe that that actually goes into the fall. So Into the fall, okay. So once you learn more about the Entrepreneurial mm -hmm. Learning Initiative, You'll want to jump right on that, take that course um, so that you can become eligible for this loan if that's something that you need. Okay, next slide, please. All right. So I'm going to talk okay, for a little yeah, bit. Sorry. About, about, <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, that's, that's Barry's slide. So, exactly. Uh, yes. Thank you, Barry. Go ahead. So I'm going to talk about some of the resources that are directly available to you uh, and to anyone uh, in Virginia through Find It Virginia through your public library. So these are all things that are available to you through, uh, through your public library. They're digital resources, so you can access them through your public library's website or through the Find It Virginia website, which we'll show you at the end. Uh, these ones that we're going to talk about today are all related to, uh, in some way or the other, to business development, to building strengths, to expanding your knowledge, expanding your skills, expanding your abilities. We wanted to start off with the Entrepreneurial Learning Initiative because it's one that, uh, unlike some of the other ones, it's not teaching you how to run a business. It's not going to tell you, here's how you develop a business plan or here's how you do marketing. This is a class that is going to teach you how to think entrepreneurially. Uh, regardless of whether you're a business person trying to start a business, someone looking to change careers, uh, even uh, this is a great class for teenagers who are just trying to think about what they want to do. How do you want to uh, spend uh, the next few years of your life in, in the workforce? So learning how to think entrepreneurially means um, how to take advantage of opportunities, how to see those opportunities that are there. This is a self-paced online modular class. So you do it at your own pace. Uh, you do it through a series of training modules that ultimately I believe take about 10 hours of time, I think, to, uh, to complete. Uh, the idea is to strengthen your own understanding of really yourself as a business person, but it also is going to help you identify gaps in the community uh, as potential innovation opportunities. It's also going to help you identify stakeholders and customers, and this is all done through training from 
entrepreneurs who are like yourself started out and maybe didn't know exactly where they wanted to be, but they got there by thinking entrepreneurially. So this is really a class about how to think like an entrepreneur as opposed to how to run a business. So it's a great place to start off. And as Nan said, if you're interested in those SIRCAP loans, uh, you do have to complete the Entrepreneurial Learning Initiative, get their certificate, and then you can apply for the loan. And we can put you in touch with the SIRCAP folks for any questions you might have. Now, Excel 5 is sort of the opposite piece. Excel 5 is a unique business library that combines videos, book summaries, and articles on a variety of business topics. So here's where you're going to find more things about professional development, uh, leadership theory, best practices. Um, it's a great resource. It really puts at your fingertips a collection of resources that you're not going to find anywhere else. And again, these are uh, videos from business leaders. They're summaries of current books on important topics in business. And the articles are all, again, current, current topics in business uh, theory, business development, business practices. One great thing about Excel 5 is you can create an individual account that will, will allow you to keep track of your reading and your progress as you go through. So if you get partway through a video or partway through an article, uh, you don't lose your place. So Excel 5 is a great supplement to the entrepreneurial learning initiative in terms of now building on those skills that you've learned. Getting even more down to the nitty gritty and uh, practical, uh, we provide access to Gale legal forms. Here you're gonna find downloadable, fillable forms for basic legal transactions. There's a large section of templates for small businesses that include things like uh, invoice templates, lease templates, sales agreement templates, contracts, and a lot more. So you're going to find uh, basic forms that you can use and customize for yourself. If you're just starting out, this is a great way to get some ideas about what are the, some of those forms that I'm going to need to use. It also has tax forms for the federal level and for all state taxes, so a great place to find your tax forms. And all of the forms in here are current to the Virginia Code. They do a great job of regularly updating the forms to reflect any changes made in the Virginia Code. So Gale Legal Forms is going to be the place to go to find uh, any resource that you're going to need for your basic legal transactions with your business. They've also got uh, sections of articles and, uh, and uh, commentary. So those are worth looking at, too, that make suggestions for you. But I think the heart of Gale Legal Forms are the actual forms themselves, a great resource to use as you're starting up your business. Universal Class is another self-paced online uh, video class series with live teachers. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, here you're going to find uh, over 100 classes relating to business and entrepreneurship that range from things like soft skills. Uh, how do you interview? Uh, how do you prepare for uh, moving up in your career? Project management, uh, things like accounting personnel management and dealing with HR issues and a wealth of resources on technology and computing. These are all available um, at your own pace. Uh, you're going to find the classes combine lectures, videos, and assignments within each module. They're modular, so once you start, you can uh, take a break and go back to finish the class. You do get feedback and you can get grades from the actual instructors and download certificates of completion that will have CE credits if that's something you need. Um, it's a great way to have your employees do professional development and build skills that they might need, whether it's, you know, how to uh, be uh, stronger in Excel, or again, some of those soft skills. Uh, this one's all available with a public library card. You do want to start at your local public library, and we'll show you how to find your local public library uh, in just a little bit if you don't know that. But Universal Class is a really uh, valuable uh, professional development tool 
Um, and in addition, it has, uh, it has a variety of other kinds of classes, everything from uh, cake decorating to uh, how to write professional uh, or the, the great American novel and things like that. It does, I will say, have a, a lot of classes on writing for professional uh, situations, though. And that's another skill that I think sometimes is overlooked in a lot of places. So take advantage of what's available in, in universal class. And again, the staff, the reference staff at your local public library will be able to help connect you with the specific areas and classes in universal class that you might find most valuable. Overdrive is something you may be familiar with. It's the probably major ebook uh, platform for public libraries uh, where you can download ebooks, digital audiobooks, and digital magazines. We like to mention this because we have put together a special collection in Overdrive, uh, in our Overdrive collection, of titles on business skills. Entrepreneurship. So that's something you can check out again with your public library card uh, through uh, the Libby app, Overdrive's app, if you use that, or LibbyApp.com if you're using it on a uh, on a PC. Uh, but we do have a great collection of current business skills and entrepreneurship titles. Uh, broken out in our overdrive collection, as well as access to magazines like The Economist and other uh, other uh, financial magazines that might be of interest. And for folks who are re-entering the employment world or starting off in the employment world for the first time, we have a couple of resources. Nan is going to talk about the first one here, which is Peterson's Career Prep. Yeah, so thank you, Barry. Um, as a small business owner, my small business is my side hustle. Um, when I owned an actual bricks and mortar store, um, I, you know, valued the um, sort of opportunity to make sure I was keeping my resume strong. Um, you know, entrepreneurship comes with risks. And so to mitigate that risk, you know, you're always prepared to re-enter the job market or, you know, move up in your, your main career with your uh, small business as your side hustle. So a couple of the things that we offer, Peterson's Career Prep has some really great downloadable templates and forms for developing your resume and for cover letters so that you know that you are not being influenced by trendy things you might see online. Um, because obviously your resume and your cover letter are, are what is going to stand between you and an interview. So those need to be really strong. There's great videos and blogs on those, those topics as well as things, other um, educational opportunities like job search success, time management, workplace etiquette. And it does have an embedded job search engine with Indeed. So you can sort of keep all of your stuff in one place with Peterson's career prep. So another option that we offer um, is with Job Now. So this has a certified career coach available seven days a week from 2 p.m. to 11 p.m to sort of talk this over. Um, they are career coaches, so they're not gonna tell you what to do, but they're gonna help you walk through some scenarios. They can help you write your resume. They can help you with your job application, your search, any skill development needs. They might be able to point you in the direction of what you need to do next to strengthen um, your opportunities. They can also help you with unemployment assistant, assistance, career assessment, you know, what. Maybe you want to change careers, you're not happy in your current career, but it does have this um, sort of strength finder and coaching opportunity to help you uncover that. It's got test prep resources, practice tests, and career credentialing for over 140 specific careers. Some features do require that you create an account. So that's jobs now. Um, there's an additional piece of that, that if you happen to be a veteran of the US Armed Forces, um, any branch called Vets Now, and it does the same thing, but helps you translate your military service into civilian career tracks. And for those of you who are have any military background, you know that that can often be a challenge. My husband's a veteran and it, you know, when we were figuring that out, we sure could have used some help. So th those are the resources we have available to you. And we did sort of go through that at lightning speed because we wanted to take the time to go to the actual website, finditvirginia.com, um, finditva.com, and show you what that looks like. 
uh, you know, we're, we're all in the webinar world too. Things go in one ear and out the other ear, but we wanna show you where you can go to find all of these things that we just um, threw at you. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Barry and he's gonna um, guide you through the Find It Virginia website. Right. So uh, as Nan said, Find It Virginia is at finditva.com, an easy address to remember. Um, it's a jumping off point here for all the resources that, that we've talked about. So um, if you can't find something on your public library's website, because uh, sometimes they haven't uh, linked directly to some of these resources, you can always start here to get to these resources. Um, I want to start off on this front page just to mention if you need to find a library, we have a link here that will take you to a all the public libraries in Virginia arranged by uh, locality or uh, or by name of library. So there's a couple of different ways you can find uh, find your local library. So if you need to get your library card, just click on find your local library, put in uh, in the drop down menu, choose your locality, uh, county or city, and you will find where the library closest to you is. So that's a great place to start. Make sure you have a public library card because a lot of these resources uh, while if you're in a public library building in Virginia, they will authenticate directly. Uh, if you are outside working from home or your business site, uh, you will need to authenticate with a public library card for many of these resources to get in there. Um, so I do want to show you sort of the quickest way to find uh, a specific resource is to go to our all resources link here at the top menu. I'm going to click on that. We have resources in a, a few different areas, research, read, life and career. All the things that we've talked about today are in the life and career section. So you can see here's the link to Excel 5, initiative, job now, Peterson career prep, universal class vet now that Nan mentioned. Uh, I should say actually the legal forms is up here in the research section, but the Easiest way to find any of the resources is to go to all resources. You can also use the for adults, for kids, and for teens sections. Uh, if you're working with uh, perhaps younger users or have kids that might be uh, able to take advantage of some of these resources, because we do have some great resources for school as well. But that's the way to get started here. Finditva.com, all resources. You can see what what we have in all these different areas. But I certainly would encourage you also to go to your local public library's website, uh, look at their section, and they're, they're gonna be calling the things like uh, databases or research or learning resources. And that's where you can jump off uh, right from your local public library site with your card as well. So it looks like we've got a, at least one question here. And did you have anything you wanted to, uh, mentioned before we move on to the any questions folks have no i'm trying to look up some of the answers to questions being posed in the um q a and so for the person that is asking about maryland resources um i don't know if maryland offers this um and i'm trying to i just found the maryland state library's website that refers to their public library. So I've put that in the answer, but every state is different about what they offer. I can tell you that um, if you decide to hop across the river, that um, Fairfax County allows residents of other states to get a library card. And so in that case, if you went and got a Fairfax, perhaps even an Arlington or Alexandria card, it would work there. I'm pretty sure those libraries don't have residency restrictions if you wanted to get that card. So that's the best I can do on that one, I'm afraid. Um, okay, so let's Library see. cards reciprocal between states. Uh, probably yeah. not. That's gonna yeah. be, that would be highly unusual yeah. because so many libraries are tied to local funding. Yes. So. And then uh, the free that's research assistance. Um, I'm sorry, Barry. No, I'm sorry. I just saw. What about Toano, Virginia? There's a. It's unusual to see Toano name checked in a uh, in a uh, program like this. Uh, Toano, Virginia, would be the Williamsburg Regional Library System. So you would want to make sure you have your your WRL card. Yeah, yeah. 
And so for the person who asked about the free research assistance, that's really about um, it going to differ from library to library, but every single library will be offer be able to offer you some research assistance. So, you know, you would simply go into your local public library um, or shoot them an email, give them a call and say, this is the information I need and they're going to be able to help you. Um, but uh, Barry, did you, um, I I'm sorry, I was busy looking up the Maryland stuff. You showed them how to find your public library, right? I'm right, sure you did. right. Yeah. We did. Okay. Yeah. And so in, in many of your public libraries are going to have some sort of, as Nan said, either an email or even a live chat uh, service where you can, you know, talk with a librarian uh, remotely, but get your questions answered right away. Yes. Um, Fairfax County will, if you work or live in, in Fairfax. Yep. Fairfax okay. City yep. County. Yep. So, okay, so articles and paywalls. This is always <laughs> a huge um, challenge. Uh, let me see if I can open that up and tell you. So Spring, Springer probably is not going to work unless yeah. they have a, unless your local library has a separate subscription. Yeah, I'm, I am connected to our library's network and I am only seeing the abstract. So um, that, uh, that sort of specificity is going to purely depend on the library. But the resource in research on Find It Virginia called Master File Complete right. will be your best bet for access to articles without, with your library card. That's what gets you through the paywall. Right. However, your local public library might be able to interlibrary loan that article from another institution. So what that means is you can go to your local library. So if you wanted that Springer article and you couldn't get it to it through the paywall, your local library, all libraries sort of have this uh, gentle person's agreement that we help each other uh, provide resources to the patrons that need them. So you can say, I can't get this. I would like to interlibrary loan this and a librarian would on your behalf seek access to that article. Right. Um, so, and that's what that's called, interlibrary loan. Yeah, and that resource that Nan mentioned uh, that we didn't talk about was called Master File. Yeah. Um, so Master File Complete. On the Find Virginia page, no list of the services you discussed. Uh, I guess well, I'm not 100% um, certain. What services do you yeah. mean, Tom? Okay, so all of the digital resources that, that Barry showed on Find of Virginia, Virginia um, those are all going to be there. But in terms of the services, like, you know, um, the librarian's name that you would ask for, the interlibrary loan, that's going to be individual to your library. So in Virginia, we have 94 library systems in 315 odd buildings across the Commonwealth. So um, your best bet is going to go to that section on Find of Virginia that Barry showed you to put in the locality where you live. Um, and so Tom, the login and prompt information, I, I wish I could say it was the same across the board, but for all of those resources on Find of Virginia, the vendor, the people who su supply it, um, have different authentication requirements. So generally, we have said on the resource summary whether you need your library card or not. A lot of them will authenticate by geolocation. And if that fails, they'll go to your ISP, your IP address, like are you in the library? And if all of those fail, it'll go to asking you for your library card number. So, um, and Roger, yes, you're the, Toano has all of those, but it's going to be in the context of the Williamsburg Regional Library System. And your closest library, I believe, is going to be the James City County Library. Right on right, Croker Barry? Road. 7770 Croker Road. Okay. <laughs> well, so Tom, I guess the in terms of where to begin, I think it's it's thinking about what uh, what are you trying to do? Um, so what do you what are you trying to learn? 
um, the resources that we are offering sort of cover, as we talked about some of the different areas, entrepreneurship, uh, finding resources, and so forth. Um, you know, it may be the answer is to um, call up your library and have them, you know, talk with you um, about what your needs are, and then they can best direct you. So, uh, so Tom, if you click on the links, uh, Barry, why don't you go back to sharing Find at Virginia? Sure, sure. So for instance, Tom, if you wanted to get to Excel 5, um, the title uh, in blue there is linked. And so you'd click on that. That's going to add you to either create an account or you can use this uh, temporary Virginia one. That's not going to, that's popping up because it's saved on my computer. It's not going to pop up on your computer. So, uh, but you could create a, create an account or sign in with a, the a generic account here. Um, and then once you were signed in, you would be able to, uh, to access all the resources in Excel 5. So similarly with, uh, Let's see, let me go to the Gail Lee. If you click on the, the link there at the in the title, this one is going to ask me to log in because I'm it it thinks probably I'm somewhere other than Virginia because I'm on a okay, hot spot. So here. um I'm gonna ask you to pause for a minute. Tom is saying, Tom, you don't see any of the information you're showing, so you can't see that screen. Huh, are, are other people seeing when we share the screen? I'm gonna go ahead and share screen again. Let's see if this. Yeah, cause I was, I was seeing it. Are people seeing this, a login, a sign in block here? And somebody said, let's see the chat says, there we go. Yeah, it's working for me. Nadine says, yes, she can see it. Okay. Tom doesn't match what you see at the site. Maybe could, uh, Barry, could you start from the home page again and show how you got to that second page that you were on? Sure. That so if we're here at the Find It Virginia homepage, um, right everybody, everybody should be seeing that now. Um, so this is the, the homepage. To get that next page on all resources, that just gives you a link to all of the resources. Any of the blue text is a hyperlink. Um, so you can click on any of those blue text items like entrepreneurial learning initiative. And it will slowly here, but load up. And again, you can either log in if you've already created an account or you can sign up uh, using the links in the upper right there to get started. Does that, does that help? There's no menu. Okay, so Tom, um, I have your email from our earlier um, communication so why don't after this, perhaps you and I can connect and troubleshoot what's happening with your browser. Cause it sounds like it's something going on with, yeah, that'd be great, Tom. We'll, we'll sort that out. Um, you know, and just as an FYI, that's another really good thing librarians are good at. <laughs> it's troubleshooting right. your technology issues. <laughs> so if you have a, um, an issue like that, your public library is a great place to start as well. Yeah. And as, it, as we said, you know, oh, go ahead, Nan. Yeah, I uh, was just going to ask, like, you know, if people, um, you know, if we knew where you were in the States, we might have 
some other things to, to talk about, but I don't know with 30 odd people in the room if that's a reasonable thing to do. <laughs> Um, but I will say that some libraries, particularly in the larger, more urban centers, um, have additional business resources. These are just things, the things that we've shown you today, every single library in Virginia has to offer you, every single one of them. But places like Prince William, Fairfax, Virginia Beach, uh, City of Roanoke, County of Roanoke, um, all the larger Wait. localities. A couple of them even have business librarians. So right. their whole job is to support you. So I really do encourage you to find your local public library, explore their website. Um, many of them will also be happy to have a virtual chat with you to um, discuss you know, what they specifically have to offer you. Uh, let's see, Roger. So Doris, um, Glen Allen, that, as you probably know, is the Henrico County Public Library. I don't think they have a specific business library, but they do have a ton of stuff. Yeah, they've got a lot more resources beyond the Find of Virginia ones, for sure. So Roger, um, <coughs> I would highly encourage you to take the Entrepreneurial Learning Initiative. That's going to give a, give you a lot of things to think about in terms of growing your business and um, working on that aspect of it. In terms of winning bids, you might look in universal class for um, that type of content. Again, these are going to be things that your local librarian can help you craft like a personal learning plan for how you go about it. Um, the Library of Virginia also has its own kind of library card, and they have some additional sources. There's one called Data Axle that is specifically useful to entrepreneurs in terms of identifying competitors and what they might be doing. So, Roger, you might take a look at what other dispatchers are doing and see what you might glean from that. To get a Library of Virginia card, you simply need your state ID, like a driver's license or um, personal ID card that you get from the state through the DMV. And that will be what authenticates your library card. Thanks, yeah, sir. so Nadine, um, I'm gonna stop talking for a second and go grab the Library of Virginia um, site where you would go to get your card. Yeah so, um, <laughs> yeah, so um, more narrowly, I think, you know, that, that as Nan said, the Library of Virginia has some business resource database data axle. Uh, I know other public libraries are using a product called A to Z databases, which is a business research database. Uh, Roger Williamsburg Regional Library, I know, has that unless they've given it up in the six months since I left there. Um, but uh, so that might be something you'd want to look into as well. Um, and uh, there was another question. I'm sorry, I saw and I was going to uh, see, maybe it's it disappeared while I was looking at things here. Oh, yeah. So competitor research. So Nan, uh, Nadine Nan is going to pull up that link there. Uh, to get a public library or get a library of Virginia library card. But I would echo Nan that your, your public library uh, is really going to be a place to start. And I, I guess the question I missed was, uh, the, do, somebody asked, do, do libraries all have business sections? Um, I think you'll find most public libraries in their nonfiction print collection are going to have a section on business resources. It's usually going to be in the 600, 650 section of the Dewey Decimal System, 652 particularly. Uh, and there you're going to find, uh, you know, again, books about uh, leadership, books about project management, books about how to, to keep your books 
uh, really they're going to cover from the very narrow and specific to the very broad and general. So yeah. check out your, uh, you know, those business sections in your public library's print collection, as well as their digital resources. Yeah. Um, and Doris, I see which light you're asking, which library in Richmond, um, each of your branches at the Richmond city library is going to have some information just from a size perspective, your main library on Franklin Street is probably going to have the largest business section. But I will suggest to all of you, um, you know, yeah, we're librarians, we love us some books, but we're really about the most up-to-date, accurate information. By the time business information is printed and put in a book and published and printed on and gotten itself onto a shelf in a library, the information in it may be dated. So, I would encourage you to think about books for things like professional development, leadership skills, um, kind of the, those kind, you know, uh, some uh, uh, accounting best practices. Those kinds of things are more stable information, and it's going to be things that you can rely on for market data, for grant strategies, for right. all of that. I'm going to encourage you to look for a digital resource because that information gets updated all the time as opposed to what you might find in print on a book in a shelf in your library. Right. Uh, Nick asks, is this uh, going to be recorded? And I believe, Amanda, that is correct. It is being recorded and you'll send the yeah. link out. Yeah, we'll send a, a link to the recording and we'll also send out the slides. Uh, so right. we'll have that after the session. And yeah. Roger, uh, again, if you're talking about the Williamsburg Regional Library, I believe their hours on Saturday are from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, but, you, you know, any of your, uh, I think uh, given the pandemic situation still going on with library hours being uh, somewhat, somewhat flexible, uh, it's always a good idea to check your library's website for their hours. I think you'll find all libraries have their hours right there in the front of their website. But yeah. Williamsburg Regional, I'm pretty sure, is, is 10 to 5 yeah. on Saturdays. Uh, Tom, you're considered the public uh, at the Library of Virginia, but you know there's also no harm in registering as a as a researcher. That's, <laughs> they feel like we're all researchers. Um, it doesn't really get you anything differently. I think it's just uh, they'd like to know the they being the the research staff at the Library of Virginia, so they know who they're helping. But um, as as Barry was saying, you know, the pandemic, the library industry has been affected just the same as everybody else. We also have um, capacity issues. We've also had the great resignation. Um, and so struggling to staff libraries to 100% to the way it was pre-pandemic. Um, so we'll echo that from what Barry said, um, that if you find that your library hours may have been adjusted simply because don't have enough library workers. <laughs> have enough librarians to get those <laughs> libraries up to snuff. So, um, as with all things these days, it just depends. A poll just popped up, so fill yes. out that poll. Yes. But and I think Barry, that that's our cue that we're, we're we need to stop talking now. Oh no, we, I guess we can, no. <laughs> we can still answer questions if anybody has one. I just wanted to get this in. Uh, yeah, if you wouldn't. It, for, for the folks who are still here, if you would help us improve our sessions, you can fill out this evaluation for us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tom, uh, Library of Virginia think... does, not, does not have branches, so you're going to want to go work through your public library. What part of Northern Virginia are you in? McLean. Okay. So that's going to be, I guess, Fairfax County Fairfax. Public Library. Yeah. And Fairfax yeah, so does have a business library, Tom. Yeah. Cool. Well, as you can tell, Barry and I are very passionate about what we do. And you'll find that most librarians are. And honestly, our whole goal is to connect users with the information that they need. So you will get this same enthusiastic response from your local librarian as you did from Barry and from myself. And I thank you all for helping us um, spread the word. So if you have other friends in your entrepreneurial community, please refer them on. Tom, yep. I am unsure which branch has the business library, so you might check out their website. Because what Fairfax has, what, 20, 20 branches? Yeah, they've got a lot of branches. <laughs> All right. Well, I think uh, we're ready to wrap up. Thank you, Nan and Barry, so much. That was an awesome presentation. Uh, I learned a lot. 
there are some really interesting and great resources. Um, so as we mentioned before everybody, um, you will all receive an email and a link to the recording and to the slides. If you'd like to sign up for upcoming webinars with the SBDC or access recorded webinars, please Virgin, uh, visit virginiasbdc.org slash training. You can also access on our website, the COVID Business Recovery Center, which we developed to help owners not only continue business operations, but to thrive and recover. All of our SBDC resources are designed to be used in collaboration with your local SBDC advisors. So if you, you know, also want to do that, um, along with the resources that you learned about today, you can um, reach out to us um, and sign up for a free and confidential session by emailing help at virginiasbdc.org or via our website. Thank you all so much for attending today, and we hope to see you at our next session.